Hi, Monty Pal here on behalf of G1 Oncology Now. Today we're going to be talking about updates in kidney cancer with three of my dear friends. We're going to start with a quick round of introductions, beginning with you, Christina. Hi, I'm Christina Suarez. I'm a medical oncologist at Bideburn Hospital in Barcelona, Spain. Dan? Hi, folks. Dan George from Duke. I'm a GU medical oncologist and happy to be part of the panel. Awesome. Brad? Yeah, and I'm Brad McGregor, also a GU medical oncologist from Dana-Farber in Boston. Awesome. Well, different parts of the world here. Monty Powell from Los Angeles, California, and we're going to dive right in. In the last couple of minutes here, we're actually going to chat about a topic also that I know is near and dear to all of us, which is non-clear cell kidney cancer. And in the interest of time, I'm going to hone in on papillary renal cell, which is probably where we have the most data. Um, so, you know, Christine, a patient comes into your clinic, uh, you know, has intermediate poor risk disease, but pathology as opposed to clear cell, which is really what we focused on to date, is papillary in this case, metastatic papillary kidney cancer. What's your typical frontline approach there? In an ideal world, <laughs> uh -huh. um, I would like to, um, to use a combination. I think Nivocabo and Lem, Lempem have, have the better data for this patient. So, I don't know which, if we are going to, to use in the future, we are really going to use in the future the meta status um, because we, we have the Calypso results that we are, it's not going to be approved. We have some meta trial ongoing, so maybe give some answers. But now, today, if I, with um, not taking into account a meta status, I would use Nivoca or Lenpem if I could. Or Lenpem, makes sense. What about you, Brad? Non clear cell, papillary. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, I mean, I think. Papillary is such a diverse group, even within yeah. like that, right? It's like you have these different, like you have the classical papillary, and then you have what used to be called type 2, which is this very heterogeneous group with a very different process. So I, and I, I think about them a little bit different, to be honest. I mean, so well, fortunately, we have clinical trials, and so we have a trial that yeah. with Cabo, Nevo, Ipi, that um, we actually just accrued 40 patients to. And we're hoping to get results actually quite soon, um, which has been a great option, and it's ongoing with a little bit lower dose of Cabo. But I do think I'm a little bit differently. So the classical papillary, I mean, I think I agree, Cabo Nevo, Lempem, I think PatMet too is yeah. exciting. Cabo with or without Tesla situation. But then if you have the more, maybe like an FH deficient RCC, I think there's some really nice data that maybe the Nevo IP can do something there. Um, and so I, it does really, you know, I think as we think about like the very histologies, we used to think, oh, it's just non clear cell or it's just all papillary. But really, it's a like histology directed therapy is where we want to go. And some of these trials are ongoing. I think we find signals in this type or this type, and hopefully we can sort of take that to the next level and really think about how we approach this. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned PatMet, too. I'm really excited about yeah. that. We yeah. just want Cabo versus Cabo with Tizo, and it builds on some of our prior mm -hmm. data with Cabo in the frontline setting. Christine and I are actually launching a study, uh, which is called uh, uh, 304, and the trial is actually going to explore sedentinib as a control arm versus XL092 plus nivolumab. So I think it'll be an interesting option for patients across three different histologies, unclassified, translocation, and papillary. And, you know, many folks have said, well, why a synonym control arm? And it's because when you look at the guidelines right now, NCCN, EAU, yep. despite all our efforts to sort of modulate them and incorporate some of these cool new options, uh, they still read synonym uh, as a you know, preferred option alongside CABO. And in many countries, um, you are not allowed to, do, to use anything else, at least in my country. Right, yeah. right. And, you know, I think this is really the point, right? These are rare cancers. Yeah. And, and, and we need these patients on clinical trials. Yeah. I mean, we, we've got to be able to, you know, kind of lean on our larger communities to say, hey, when you have somebody that's got an unusual histology, you know, even if they're older, even if they don't have, you know, kind of great performance status or other issues, refer them in. It's our job to get them in quickly and get them on these studies. Because this is really how we're going to find out, advance the field, and and find out really, you know, what are the best treatments. So we're not stuck with treatments that are, you know, 15, 20 years old, still treating the same way. So I, I, I'm really glad you guys are doing that study. And, I'm, you know, I'm hoping, you know, as much as possible, you know, these, these papillary patients can find their way to clinical trials because they, they, you know, we do consider this, you know, a rare disease. Totally. You put it so beautifully, Dan. I do think that there's some equipoise in terms of how we, you know, manage these patients. The single arm, you know, TKI, IO data looks great, but it's single arm data. You know, we really do need the randomized yeah. studies mm -hmm. to really confirm benefits. So I, it sounds like we're all on the same page there, which is terrific. Mm -hmm.